Today we're having a look at our top five Grasshopper plugins geared more towards engineers and more specifically structural engineers, although some of these plugins are quite useful for other disciplines. These are obviously our opinion, but we've been using Grasshopper for quite a number of years now and we use it almost every day. So this is what we've come up with as our list. If you think we've missed any really worthwhile plugins, let us know in the comments below. But either way, I think all five of these plugins are really worth a download. We certainly find that all of these help our workflow in terms of speeding it up in your normal day-to-day -day work, but also improving what you can actually deliver and improving how you can collaborate with architects and other disciplines and also what you can deliver to the client as well. So some really worthwhile stuff there. Okay, number five is a very popular plugin for Grasshopper users and it has some very useful things for engineers and structural engineers specifically. It's called Lunchbox and you can see the toolbar that you get above here. So it has the data group which is creating data sets um, and you can also export or import data from different formats such as JSON or XML or comma separated values. So that's good for getting data in and out of Grasshopper into different formats that other programs might need. It also has a couple of charts here which I've got shown here and you just throw some data in there and if you right click you get a Windows um, chart. You can save that and use it later and you can create data grids and things like that. It's got some other things that you might use for um, facades, for example, breaking up um, shapes. It's got some machine learning. Um, so linear regression, for example, might be useful to, you can basically train a, um, this component with data and then it will give you the line of best fit. That's pretty useful in some search situations. Not something I've used a lot of, but could be useful for quite a few people. It's got some, you know, advanced mathematical shapes. Panels, again, for facades, that's useful stuff, breaking up facades into different forms. And here we've got structure, so we've got different trusses um, and grids in 2D and 3D. So as a quick example, I've got here, I've just put these two lines in here, a top and a bottom line, and you can change the divisions, if I just zoom out. So you can quickly make a truss, and there's different types of trusses, so a sawtooth, um, and the various types, um, fear and deal truss there. You've got some other useful tools as well, like um, sorting points, which you can do in normal Grasshopper, but it's useful having, um, this just makes it uh, a lot more straightforward. Um, du sorting duplicate points and duplicate curves, which can happen a lot when you're importing data from a CAD file, for example. And then lastly, you've got Excel Reader and Excel Write. So obviously a lot of engineers use Excel day to day and I haven't used these much myself but obviously very useful to get data in and out of Excel. Number four is Kangaroo 2 and it's basically a real-time physics engine in Grasshopper. It has a few different solvers, which you can use in different situations. It's also the plugin probably with the highest 
steepest learning curve. It's quite difficult to get your head around initially, but equally it's probably one of the most powerful plugins. And there's a lot of different things you can do with it. For example, you might have seen from some of my other videos, I've got this live truss that I can just drag in the Rhino window and get the bending moments out. Or you could show in real time what happens when a structure has a member failure. You can also apply physics on solid objects like this disk here. Or I've got this large element here under gravity. You can also do collisions between solids as well if you want to look at that. Overall Kangaroo's a very powerful tool and it's been updated in the past and hopefully we'll have more updates in the future. Number three is pretty obvious for most structural engineers and that is Karamba 3D and it's familiar because it basically replicates a lot of the functionality that a traditional structural analysis package would have in it something like ETABS or Space Gas or SAP2000 or STAD or the like. You might have seen from my other videos a demo of how to set up this truss analysis. And so it has what you'd expect, so elements such as cross sections, materials, joints, that sort of thing components to allow you to model so turn things into um, turn lines into beams or meshes to shells and supports you've got your loading cross sections different steel sizes etc materials steel and concrete etc and then you've got your actual analysis and you can do linear and non-linear in Karamba. You can also get eigen modes and vibration. And it has some BSO stuff as well. Have a look at my other videos for some of that. And you've got your result output, which is pretty nice in Karamba. It's uh, all color coded in 3D. And a couple of utilities as well for deleting um, duplicate lines and things like that, which is always useful to have. Okay, number two in terms of ranking is very close to number three in my opinion. And in fact, they're both got a similar functionality. They're both trying to replicate the function of a traditional structural engineering program. Having said that, there are some key differences and it's enough for me that this one edges out Karamba 3D and that is Kiwi 3D. And you can see an example of a similar truss that I did with the Karamba 3D scenario. It's got very much the same functionality and you can achieve the same things. I do find Kiwi 3D slightly more straightforward and easier to use. One of the reasons is that it works better with Grasshopper and Rhino native elements, slightly better than Karamba. You can use curves without breaking them up, so you don't need to break them up at nodes. That's a big advantage. And another one is you can use uh, surfaces or breps which are native to Rhino and Grasshopper. So you don't need to convert them to meshes. In Karamba, you must use a mesh to get any analysis results. To quickly run through the tools you get with the plugin, you've got analysis, you've got linear and non-linear. You've also got some form finding. You've got your different materials, 
beams and cables and membranes and shells. As I said before, you can use breps and surfaces, which is native, so you don't have to convert things to meshes, which is can be a big time saver. So you can um, connect points with offsets and you can have sliding points. You've got your two analysis modes, which are curve and surface. That's basically a 2D um, analysis versus a 3D or, or surface-based um, analysis. You've got some components to make sections. You've got your loads or your point curve and surface loads, your actual analysis and your solver. The analysis component will give you a 3D representation of some section sizes. It won't do all sections. Karam is the same in that. You'll get th simple things like pipes and box sections, but you won't get I sections or custom sections from different countries, etc. Same as Karamba. You've got your results 1D and 2D, support forces, etc. And in uh, Kiwi 3D, it uses the native um, output that comes with Grasshopper. You just plug it into these values, and that's that's a native Grasshopper element. So again, it works with Grasshopper really nicely. And then a couple of utilities for converting um, units, etc. So a little bit more simple uh, and it can be a little bit quicker to use. And finally, number one for this list Rhino Inside Revit. It's made number one despite a couple of things. Firstly, I realised that not everyone uses Revit but it's becoming increasingly used by engineers and even more so by architects. And even if you don't use it yourself, you'll probably come across others that do. So being able to share Revit models and interact with them in a quick and easy way with Grasshopper is a huge advantage on itself. And secondly, it really opens up the database of Revit to be used with Grasshopper in a form that a lot of the industry is already used to. I think it's worth saying that the plugin's done very well, even though it's still a work in progress. Not everything is perfect yet, but you know, it's already got live previews in the Revit window and I can input I can quickly add my grasshopper functionality into Revit but you can also extract information from Revit write a quick script in grasshopper and output it to Revit again or just use the results to run an analysis model quickly and not recreate it in a separate program. It could be a huge time saver for some people. The toolbar that you get does have a lot of elements in it, although they're logically broken up. Some of it's quite easy, so you know, adding a beam or a column or a wall are fairly straightforward but it does allow some pretty detailed interaction with Revit. If you're a user of Revit or you've got a good understanding of it, this isn't too difficult to pick up. But if you don't know anything about Revit, you could probably safely ignore most of this stuff and get still some very useful functionality out of this plugin. I won't go into this plugin in much detail in this video, but suffice to say, probably the sky's the limit in terms of what can be and what will be built with this in the future. It's still really early days for this plugin, and I'm sure there's people that are working on 
stuff that's built on top of this that you will be using in the future with either Revit or Grasshopper or both. So it's really opened up Revit uh, and allowed some really good interaction. And you'll see a lot more of it in the future without a doubt. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.